Hi, my name is Brian from Denmark, your tech friend, and this is a comparison of the Asus Zenfone 10 to the OnePlus 11. Two very different beasts, but they share in common the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 CPU, and I'll get back to that because I also want to speak about some of the differences these two phones have. So let's get to it. The first difference I've noticed, and you may also already have noticed, that is the back side of this. If you're a person that uses a lot of hand cream that I've just put on, you can see it attaches to the back side of this Asus. That has a very grippy back side. That's both a plus and of course a minus if you use the hand cream and you want your phone to look pretty. On the other hand, it dries completely off the OnePlus 11 with a wipe. And that's just one of the stories I can tell you about these two phones because I've been using them for the last three weeks. First off, let's address the size difference. We're talking about a 5.9 inch versus a 6.7 inch. And that, of course, raises some immediate differences. And one of them being is like the size of the icons. If you can see, I would prefer like a 4x5 grid layout on the Asus versus like a 5x6 grid layout on the OnePlus. The next thing, of course, is just how they fit in the pocket. Excuse my very bad pockets today when I'm wearing these jogging shorts. And this is the one you really want to have in your pocket because it's just so small. Whereas this one is quite a bit bigger. So if I had not been wearing my jogging trousers, it's called in Danish, I think it's called sweats in, in the US, right? Then of course I would prefer to wear the Zenfone 10. Another place where the size come into play is, of course, if I'm playing some games, I prefer to do it on the OnePlus because it just has the bigger screen size. And if I read stuff just browsing, I'm with the OnePlus. But if I want to hear some music or just being on YouTube and prefer a scenario with some good sound, I am on the Asus Zenfone 10 because the sound is just better. And speaking of sound, on the Asus you have a 3.5 millimeter jack at the very top. You don't have nothing of that on the OnePlus 11. And regarding the sound, if you're an avid YouTube watcher as I am, there is kind of a problem with both these phones. And that is, if I turn them down, if I turn the switch to off here, now it won't play what I'm playing on YouTube. And it's exactly the same on the OnePlus 11. And then I can only choose do not disturb if I want not to get beeped out during the night if I fall asleep to YouTube. So that's kind of annoying as opposed to a Motorola or a Samsung where you can see that even though it says muted right on the top, you can see the volume bar is at maximum level and that's much more useful and nice. And then you can see, but I have the silent toggle switch yet, yeah, but you cannot toggle it in your sleep now, can you? Another thing when we're talking about the physics on the very side of the cell phone, you have a fingerprint authentication here and you have on-screen fingerprint authentication on the OnePlus 11. That, by the way, doesn't work as well as you would have liked it to. Then I would prefer actually the side-mounted fingerprint of lock of the Zen phone, even though that's also a bit annoying because it's not quite enough into the phone or out of the phone. So it becomes sometimes a bit awkward just to try and find it. Gaming, the 3D Mark stress test, you can see that the Asus actually has performed with a much higher degree of stability. <laughs> that said, it isn't super impressive, but behold, the OnePlus stability of only 40.9, that's terrible. I'll just put in the results from after Android 14 has been put on this that have just arrived also. Both of them eat away at the battery when under pressure. But what I really wanted to speak about was the maximum temperature. Where you can see it's only 41 degrees on the OnePlus 11, where it's 50 degrees Celsius on the Asus Zenfone. 10. And that's actually kind of a problem I would like to address because also not only is it very high in 
when you test it and you stress it, but also when charging, it becomes enormously warm. I don't know why, but it's to the extent that you can't really hold and use the device when charging, unless you, of course, have got some very resilient fingers that can cope with the heat. <laughs> and speaking of these performance tests, I have also run the Geekbench, where you can see there's quite a bit of a difference there, especially with the single core score. I don't know really why it is uh, that tremendous, but uh, perhaps you can tell me. Process information here where you can also see that they're both running on 16 gigs of RAM. So I don't know why there's such a momentous difference right there. So just a quick remark on the Asus. The feeling I get is that it reminds me of an old AMD chip, you know, fast and running very hot. And on that notion, let's just talk about charging. The inbox charger of the OnePlus 11 is 100 watts in the US and 120 watts here in Europe and I think elsewhere in the world. And it charges it to 100% in just 25 minutes, I think, in either scenario. And I've actually tested this also. You can watch it right up here. Whereas you're gonna wait about an hour to fully charge the Asus Zenfone 10. But another thing is that the OnePlus 11 does not support wireless charging, whereas the Asus Zenfone 10 support wireless 15 watt charging and also 5 watts reverse wireless charging. And from my three weeks of real life use of these two phones, I would like to say that the OnePlus 11 drains battery, I would say disappointingly fast, I don't know why, and the Asus Zenfone 10 is a little battery master. But again, when you can charge it to full in 25 minutes, and it's not really something that matters all that much as long as it gets you through just through one day. The Zenfone 10 has an IP certification of 68, that's water and dust resistance, where it's only IP 64 on the OnePlus 11. And I forgot to address that these two guys, of course, have the same CPU, but I hope that you from the Geekbench and the 3D Max stress test can assess for yourself which one you prefer. In daily life, they're both just fast. Then one last comment as the daylight is really fading here, is that the daily operation of the UI of these two phones is, well, they are different. And the impression I get is that I personally just prefer the Oxygen OS over the Asus Zenfone's tweak to the Android operating system. Insane specs, by the way, right? 16 gigs of RAM, 512 megabytes of storage, 144 AMOLED screen, 4300 watts battery. Who would have thought of that back in the day? And now to talk about the cameras, or you could actually call it the elephant in the room, because there's quite a bit of a difference here. I've actually made a separate video on both of these phones' camera, so you can go watch them by clicking right up here, where I speak about these two phones' camera. But just to put it plainly, you can also see these videos I've just taken in a direct comparison between these two phones, that the OnePlus is slightly ahead, I would say, and in, in, in definitely in most cases in daily use, the OnePlus 11 is the phone to go for. You appear much more close on the Zen phone than on the OnePlus 11. But that's up to your liking, and how about the quality? And what about the sound, by the way? Finally, the OnePlus has this dual video recording mode that the Asus Zenfone 10 doesn't have, so that's just a little extra feature for you. So, these are two very different beasts. That's the daylight face, and I hope you can take some of my real life uses into your buying decision, and I'll see you in the next video. My name is Brian from Denmark, your tech friend. Please do subscribe. Oh, no.